All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you what I call a stack and shuffle animation. What I have here is one square. If I tap this button, it's going to appear to slide up and stack behind that card, almost giving it like a three dimensional effect. If I press it again, I have a third one here as well. And if I press it again, I am back to one. You could add even more squares or whatever shape you want. Squares work best for the way we're gonna be doing this. You can put your music players in this thing and you can shuffle through maybe your music player, your RSS feed, uh, your battery stats or whatever. Um, you can put components into these things and then we can shuffle through them as you can see here. Now, one thing to mention here though is that this is a linear thing, meaning we're only going one, two, three, you can go to four if you wanted to, but we can't go backwards for this particular tutorial. So it's a linear thing, it only goes in one direction, we can't go back. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Inside of a blank preset, let's head over to globals and we're going to add a list global. I'm gonna call it go. And we're gonna use the numbers one, two, and three. I'm gonna set that to a one just for starters. Now let's also add three colors for each one of our overlap groups or our shapes that we're going to make. I'm gonna set these three colors. And then a number global variable that I'm gonna call dir for duration. And I'm gonna set that duration to 10 for right now. And 10 really is one second. That's gonna be how long it's going to take one card to slide up and what appears to make it slide behind the other cards in our stack. Now back inside of items, let's add an overlap group and we're going to call this one one. Inside of this overlap group, let's go ahead and add a shape and let's do a square. A square is the best one to use here. A rectangle would work fine. Anything with uh, nice square corners, but I'm gonna use a square here and it's important to remember the size of the shape. I'm gonna make this one 400, a little bit bigger than what I showed you at the beginning. I'm gonna apply the one color global that I have to this. And then back inside of this one overlap group where we have our square, let's just add a quick text item or this is where you can start adding your music players and your RSS feeds. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna put a big old one right here. And then what I want to do with this entire overlap group is I'm going to position it in the center. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I'm gonna do that for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and add a button. I'm gonna use a font icon. This is gonna be directly inside of root. And when we touch this button, we want to toggle that global switch go. And what is important here is that you did one, two, three, uh, because you want to go in that order. Again, this is a linear thing. We can only go in one direction for this particular animation. So I'm gonna select next value. And also what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add a quick text item just to see what the value of GV go is. I'm going to position that in the top right hand corner of my device so I can see it. All right, now if we touch this button, as you can see, we are toggling one, two, and three. So that's exactly what we want to happen here. And let's go back into that one overlap group and let's go ahead and apply an animation. Remember, I told you it was important to remember the size of your square, how tall it is, because we want to move it up this entire thing, we want to move it up the exact amount of the size of our shape. That's what's going to move it up. And then we're also gonna come and talk about how we move it down and how I'm scaling it a little bit to give it that three dimensional effect where it appears to be sliding behind our stack of cards as we shuffle these things. So for our animation, let's react on a formula. And using my cheat sheet over here, I don't think it matters if you change this one because we're gonna be using a complex animation, but for all of our animations, we want to set them to straight. So we're gonna set that up in our complex animation. For my formula here, what I want to do is this one right here. This is the overlap group animation. And basically what this means is if GVGo is not equal to one, we want to animate this thing forward. Otherwise, we want to reset it. We don't wanna use a B to bring it back. We want to reset it for this particular case. And I did mention that we're going to use a complex animation. And for this complex animation, what we want to do for the first 50% of this animation is we want to slide this square up 400 units or pixels or whatever. And that's based on the size of that square that we created, the height of that square. Again, since it's a square, it's a 400 by 400. If you were using a rectangle here, you'd want to use the height of your rectangle. So at 50%, we're gonna do a Y offset and let's do negative 400. 
and make sure you have that set to straight. And now at a hundred percent, let's set the Y offset back to zero. But now back in our 50% spot, what we want to do there, and I should have mentioned this before I did the 100%, but anyway, 50%, what we want to do here is we want our scale X, Y to be one. Basically, this means for the first 50% of our animation, we're gonna maintain the original size. When scale X, Y is set to one, you're not changing the size of that particular shape or whatever thing you're doing. Now at 100%, you can pick, now you don't wanna scale it all the way down to zero. Somewhere around maybe 0.75, it's going to be 75% of its original size. That's gonna give it a, a somewhat of an effect where it looks like it's going into the background and back behind the deck or the shuffle or the stack or whatever you wanna call it. So let's go ahead and give this a test. And this is going to animate if GVGO is not equal to one. Well, right now GVGO is equal to one. If I press this, we should see the square go up. This entire square should go up and the bottom of this square should come right there. But as soon as it does that, it's going to start moving back down and it's going to be scaling a little bit smaller than what it is right now. But before I do that, let's go ahead and add our duration before I forget. So for duration, let's do GV dur. And now let's give it a test run. So if I press this button, it moves up. And did you notice that? I'm gonna go back to one again. So now it's reset. Now when I press it and it becomes a two, it's going to move up and the bottom of this square is going to be right here. And right when it hits that spot, it's going to move back down and it's going to scale to 75% of its original size. Let's check that one more time. All right, so that's what's giving us that effect. Now we need to add some more cards up here. So let's take this one overlap group, let's copy and paste it, and let's create a two. Inside of this two overlap group, let's change the color of our square, maintaining all our seam sizes and everything like that. And let's also change or add your items in here, your music players, your RSS feeds. I'm just gonna change it to a two. Now I want this thing to be behind number one, so I'm gonna slide it up here, and now we see our one again. Now right now the one is small, but we're gonna be fixing all of that in a few minutes with a clip. But for now, let's go to our two, let's go to our animation, and let's change one thing about the code. Let's do if GVGO is not equal to two now. Since we are using the overlap group number two, we wanna make sure this number matches up, and that will apply to all the other ones that you create. And then last but not least, let's repeat this and create a third one. So there's my three group and I'm going to position this one behind number two. So now we have one in the front and again, it's smaller because of that animation that we've applied to it. But also back in that overlap group for number three, make sure you change the animation formula to if GVGO is not equal to three. Now that looks a little bit jacked up. It'll be just fine the way it is. And right now you may say, okay, what's well, doing what it's supposed to do? Well, no, it's not because what we see here when GV go is equal to one. Now, when I make it two, I want the one to slide up and slide down, which is doing notice here, but it's not going behind all this stuff or what appears to be behind. This is where clips are going to be very helpful. So let's go ahead and work on a clip to clip number one so that it makes it appear as if it's sliding behind all these other cards. What we wanna do here is add a shape and this shape needs to be the same shape. I had a square and its size was 400. I want to position this shape in the same spot I have all my other ones. But now what I want to do is its initial position, I want it to be at 400 or whatever size your square was based on the height. This is where we want it to start at. Now I'm not going to apply the clip just yet. I want to make sure you can see what's actually happening as we do the clip animations. That's where these two pieces over here are going to be helpful. So for our animation, for our first move, what we want to do, the first move for our clip animations over here in this text, if GVGO is equal to one, we want to animate it forward. And notice there is no otherwise. I don't have a comma after this saying, hey, go back or reset. You want to leave it just like that. And what this is going to do here, well, let's just copy it over first. So I'm going to react on a formula and we're gonna put that formula in right there. So if GVGO equals one, we wanna move this thing forward. All right, now complex animation here, 
And what we want this first one to do here, I'm gonna set that to straight, though I don't think it matters as long as we have our other pieces set to straight. This complex animation here, for 100%, we want to move this thing up 400 units. That's basically the same size as my square. Again, keep those numbers in mind. Now make sure you set this to Y offset, and as a matter of fact, this probably needs to be a negative 400. I can test this. I get my positives and negatives mixed up as I'm doing this. But let's see what happens here. So basically when GVGO is equal to one, based on this code that we copied and pasted, we want this square to move up right here. Let's see if that's gonna happen. Yes, that's exactly what I want to happen. But now what we want to do here, our duration, we don't want it to be GV dur, we want it to be half of that. And you understand why once we get all this stuff working. So I'm gonna do GV dur divided by two. All right, so now it's gonna reset back and it looks like it's resetting back, but we're gonna be fixing that right here in a minute. Now, as we go back to number one again, and here comes number one right now, Notice it moved up fairly quickly. It moved up faster than what it took the entire card to go up and behind, which is exactly what we want. But we want to apply one more animation here. And this one here is gonna be the second animation. Now, since we're dealing with the clip one, we wanna make sure we use this code here. If GVGO is equal to two, we want to move it forward. Otherwise, we want it to reset. So I'm gonna react on a formula again. And we want a complex animation for this one as well. Ease set to straight. Our animator here, for 100% of this animation, we want to move twice the size. So notice we did a negative 400, now we want to do a negative 800. So whatever the height of your square is, or your rectangle, make sure you double it for this second animation. Again, everything's set to straight, but I need to make sure I set this to Y offset. And let's check that. So here's what's going to happen. If GVGO is equal to one, this square here, which is eventually going to be our clip, is going to slide up. All right, it's gonna slide up right here. And then when GVGO becomes two, it's going to slide up here. And one more thing I almost forgot for this second animation, this second move, let's make sure we do GVDUR divided by two as well right here. All right, so let's give it a test. The first one, the square is going to move right here in the center. There's our first one. Now, eventually this is going to be what's going to show number one. Now when GVGO equals two, it should slide up to here, which is exactly what we want. Now, when we apply a clip to this, when we clip this and we start clipping that first overlap group, notice you can see one here, but if I use this square to clip one, you're not gonna be able to see this one because it's not going to be inside of this shape. Check out some of my tutorials on clipping animations to understand that a little bit more. But that's exactly what we want to apply here to get this to work correctly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this clip and I didn't rename it, but I'm gonna call this one clip. That's this white square that we're animating right now. I'm gonna slide that right here, and I'm gonna to go to that one clip, and I'm gonna go over to its FX mask clip next module. So now the white square goes away, but maybe you didn't notice this either. The one is now gone. Let me go back to none. Notice the one is showing uh, because I don't have a clip applied to it. But with my one clip, and based on its position, notice the one clip is right above the one overlap group. If I come to this one clip, go to FX, and clip next module, the one goes away. That's exactly what I want to happen. Now, let's try all of this stuff out. The, the twos and the threes are still going to look a little bit weird. But now, watch this. Right now, our clip is down here. When GVGO becomes one, this clip is going to slide up, which is going to appear to make the one be the next card in line. I don't know if that makes sense, but go ahead and check it out. Notice the one is now exposed. And now, the reason why we did GVDUR divided by two for that is because we want this to happen uh, faster than what it takes for the entire card to go up and back down. I want this next move to move fast. This square, this clipping square, it's gonna move up and it's gonna stay right there. And now notice the one appears to dip behind our deck or stack of cards here as we're doing this little stack and shuffle. Now what we wanna do with this is we want to take that one clip, copy and paste it, and let's create a two clip. 
slide this two clip behind the, or above in this case, but it's really, don't really matter. Just put it right there above the two in your little layer order here. And let's go to the animations for these and let's change our formulas. So for this one here, this needs to be a two. And then our second move needs to be a three in this part of the code. And that's the only two that we really need for this animation to work. The reason why we don't have to do one for the third one is because the third one is behind all of them to begin with. So we don't have to simulate a clip to sh show that the third is going behind them because the third is going to be behind all of these things. So let's check this out. Everything should be good to go. There's the two appearing to go behind the three. Now the three is going to automatically go behind everything. Now the one appears to go behind the, all the cards, the same thing for the two, the same thing for the three. Now if you wanted to add a fourth one in here, then you would have to apply a three clip. But whatever your bottom layer is, in this case the three is the one that's behind everything, you don't need a clip for that one. But you will need a clip for all of the other pieces. I hope that makes sense. So let's go over to globals and let's just mess around with the duration a little bit. I'm gonna make it real slow to show you how this effect, it looks quite nice and it does make it appear, look, now it looks like it's kind of sliding behind the other cards. Now that's a little bit too slow, but I do want you to see how now that clip is working nicely. That's what's making that one appear to disappear. The same thing for this two. The clip is staying up here and it makes the two look as if it's going behind the cards. And just going back and maybe making that a little bit faster now. I like a fast animation, so somewhere around half a second. Let's see what that looks like. And now we have this animation. And that does give it somewhat of a 3D card shuffle stacking effect. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.